Good day, astronauts on some kind of space invasion. I'm on silent and we're on the air with Space Invaders from 1978, June 1978, in fact. This is the highest grossing arcade game of all time, one of the most influential video games of all time. I think just about everyone has heard of it. I'm not sure if everyone has played it, but everyone has heard of it at some point in time. Let's get started. At some point we were bound to try out Space Invaders or a spin-off thereof. Everyone's got their own way of playing Space Invaders. And mine, you know, before we get into the retrospective on Space Invaders on this the actual month of its 40th anniversary. Everyone's got a way of... Oh, that was... Rather... I mean, of all the ways you could start, getting killed like about two columns in is not a good way of doing it. Everyone's got their own way of doing Space Invaders. Mine is... Oh, get the mothership! Got it! Ooh, 100, excuse me. I thought it was only 50. Everyone's got their own way of doing Space Invaders. Mine, ooh, that's close. Oh man, that thing knows what my plan is. Everyone's got their own way of doing Space Invaders. Mine, as you can probably already tell, some people go go on the rows. I go on the columns. Why? Because if you go columns, Take out some rows there, just to be safe. Because if you go columns... Ooh, I just walked into that one. I'm too busy watching where I'm going as opposed to watching who's shooting at me. Because if you go columns, what it does... Oh, I didn't wasn't even trying for the mothership there. Because if you go columns, what happens is they have to travel farther. They don't... Man, that was just a terrible playthrough. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I'm too busy talking. I've never commentated and played Space Invaders before. No, my strategy is to go, is to take out the columns because it doesn't lower a row until after they reach one of the ends. So if you take out a column, then the whole gaggle of them has farther to travel in order to reach the far side, which slows their downward progress. Of course, at a certain point, you also have to remember, hey, take out the damn bottom rows across the way. But I like taking a couple of columns off. Why? Because it gives, it slows down their progress on the whole. There we go. So he took out a column there. Now can I pop this mothership? Yes. We'll try and pop this column here. We'll just, so we got ourselves a nice safe spot behind the bunker. I think they're called bunkers or bases. I forget what the actual technical term is. Now that I've taken out a whole whack of columns, now we can start worrying about rows. But yeah, you might notice some of the uh, some little bits and bobs as you in the graphics as we go along is because. I'm using the uh, MAME, the uh, Multiple Arcade Machine Emulator. And it does actually a pretty good job of emulating the original graphics of the Space Invaders machine. The original Space Invaders machines were just black and white. Old black and white CRTs. But you can see there's a little bit of color here. That's because, and I believe that was introduced in the North American version. What they did was they actually used, uh, the technical term is cellophane, but you might know it as, like, plastic wrap. Missed that. That gets hard. Oh, here, got, got it, got it. Uh, yeah, so what they used in, I believe it was just the North American version, they used plastic wrap in order to give a little color to the screen. So when they... So when the screen lights up, what would be white and on the screen, there's, or uh, I guess as it's rendering on the monitor, there's a little plastic wrap on there that turns, oops, walked into that. So where it would otherwise be white, it is actually, actually green down at the bottom and red up at the top. 
I didn't even see that coming. That one came too fast. <laughs> Take out some of the bottom rows there. Try and give myself a little breathing room. Especially with how low that column got. Try and take these out. They are firing a lot more. Uh, the developer of the game, Mr. Nishikado, what actually went, like about five years ago, we did an interview with the New Yorker on the 35th anniversary of Space Invaders and said, it would, the game would have been a lot easier if it was up to him, but the folks that uh, sounded like the folks at Taito, who published the game in Japan, and it was Midway North America, as I mentioned, or at least intended to mention. Those folks, the folks at Taito, wanted a game a little harder. Worked itself out because the game, over the course of its lifetime, inflation adjusted. I think I earned an extra life somewhere along the way, fortunately. Over the course, inflation adjusted over the course of the life of the game, it's earned something in the neighborhood of like 10 billion US dollars. And it's considered one of the great arcade games of all time. Like, one of the most influential, one of the fastest ah, game over. One of the best earning, actually probably the best earning arcade game of all time. Earned 600 million dollars from its release in mid-1978 to the end of 1978. And then proceeded to earn, what was that, I think somewhere over in the neighborhood of $2 billion by the end of 1982. So like in less than five years, it's a billion dollar game. Urban Legend was, they paid for Japanese arcades with 100, uh, was it 100 yen coin or something like that. And I just walked into that, didn't I? And I wasn't paying attention. I was busy trying to figure out the Urban Legend here. Trying to pull up this when I shouldn't have. Yeah, 100 yen coin. There's an urban legend that in Japan, the game was so popular that they were running short on 100 yen coin. Apparently, that is just it, an urban legend. But imagine if you had run out of quarters, like America had run out of quarters because a video game was so damn popular. I mean, you wouldn't think that now because obviously, you know, arcades are a thing of the past. I mean, yeah, you got retro arcades and such. Now, like, the extent of uh, arcade type things. I mean, arcades, the, the arcade models sort are of making a comeback in terms of microtransactions-ish. I mean, it's not quite the same because... Microtransactions tend to be a lot more predatory than... Well, I was going to say, it's just like, maybe we're different. It's like, uh, I was talking with someone at my day job not too long ago, and we were like... Remember watching Bugs Bunny growing up? Now parents think Bugs Bunny's too violent for kids. Maybe it's the same way with microtransactions. Not all of them, obviously. There's somewhere it's just like... Like the pay-to-win micro... Like pay-to-play, that's one thing. Pay-to-win, that's like different. Ah, oh, I got me and I'm out. Ah, shame. But yeah, by the end of 1982, the game had earned... Or grossed... Two billion dollars. Which is utterly ridiculous in like modern dollars that's somewhere in the neighborhood of close to just under eight, like around seven and a half billion dollars. It's like you think about that. What games have made that sort of money? I mean, you're talking about the upper echelon of video games earning that sort of money, making those sorts of sales. I mean, Modern, like, you're looking at, what, Grand Theft Auto, I think Grand Theft Auto 5, like, the absolute, absolute top uh, Call of Duty games are billion-dollar games, like, one singular billion-dollar game. Now, maybe, ooh, that was not good. Maybe, you know, Minecraft, maybe... Okay, that was just me not paying attention. You know, maybe Minecraft... You know, Tetris is the top-selling video game of all time. You know, so may maybe Tetris would be on that list as well. But on the whole, it's like there's not many games that have earned as much as Space Invaders. I mean, the thing was, like, the thing was an arcade, was an arcade phenomenon. It was 
massively influential. I mean, we've played games from the likes of... Ooh, that was close. We've played games from the Johns of id Software, Carmack and Romero. They both got their start with video games by playing Space Invaders. Oh, I got blown up again. Let's go again. Hideo Kojima, Miyamoto, they all got introduced to video games by playing Space Invaders in the arcade. And you look and you think, well, you know, iconic arcade games, Pac-Man, uh, Pong. And yet, like, the, the granddaddy of them all, the one that Guinness has is the most, most high-earning of the arcade games is this one. It's Space Invaders. It was a hit on consoles as well. I mean, it was the first arcade game to be licensed to a home console. I believe the Atari 2600 was... There we go. I played the... Uh, and actually, to celebrate the 40th anniversary in North America, we'll be playing a game I grew up playing for Space Invaders, which is kind of where I honed my Space Invaders skills, but we'll talk about that next week. But, uh, yeah, that wasn't a system seller, that game, but, uh, that's how I learned those things were motherships, but the motherships had bonus pickups. Dropped, like, shields and bonuses and stuff and such like that. So if you've played that game, you already know which one I'm talking about. Maybe you haven't. I don't know how many people watched and played Space Invaders. I know I mentioned I didn't have, uh... A whole lot in the way of arcade game time growing up. No, missed that one. Ah, this is the part where you gotta concentrate. You can only have one shot on the field at a time, so you can't rapid... Ah, I can only have... Sorry, I can only have one shot in the field at the limitation of the... I don't know if that was a design thing or if that was just a limitation of the hardware, but I can only have one shot on the field at a time, right? So it means you can't just, like, lay into the fire button. You gotta actually take a couple seconds to make sure your aim is true. And that... Ooh, okay, they've already broken through that part of the base, the bunker. The little shield thing. Ah, I was too busy paying attention to everything else happening on the screen. One of the things I... I like it. I don't like about Space Invaders is you can't buy yourself an extra... Okay, you can't buy yourself an extra life because right now I'm thinking, man, you know what I'd like? I'd like to buy myself an extra life. Because of things like that where you gotta get... Ah, I was over... I was trying to go to the right, not realizing I'd run out of room. But I was starting to say and then cut myself off to go off on several tangents is that Nishikado, who designed the game, said that he wanted it to be a little cheaper, or not a little cheaper. He wanted it to be a little easier. May not have been as popular if it was easier. Certainly would have earned billions of dollars, like billions of dollars without the inflation adjustment, if it wasn't as hard. Because he said in an interview with The New Yorker five years ago, he said that... You know, the game's so hard that sometimes he struggles to get by the first level. As I've demonstrated, I can't get by the second level. And sometimes I'm shocked I could get by the first level. It is a hard game. That's that's part of the appeal of it, though. I mean, that's why. You know, people... You know, it just gives you enough hope that, like, man, one little break. If I change this, if I pay more attention to that. If I... If I'm just move a little faster, if I'm a little better at my aim, I'm getting used to the aim, I could just drop that next core and that one, that one's where I'm going to get the high score, right? That was, man, that was the fun of arcades. You know, I didn't have much of an arcade. I mean, growing up, our little airport had an arcade. Although the only good machine in it was the pinball, not that there's anything wrong with that. Pinball is pretty awesome. I do enjoy with the Steam sale. I think still ongoing as of recording as of recording hasn't started and as of net as of going up I'm assuming it's still going though it's got to be pretty close to yeah because I think it'll run into the beginning of July I haven't even seen the actual dates for the damn thing I know it starts on the 21st of June 
But anyway, I digress. It's one of those things that I don't mind spending money on. For uh, the Steam sales is getting some decent tables for the uh, FX, FX3 pinball, I think it is. A fun little thing. I, I don't mind pinball. Although I wish I could find a working version of, you know, Space Cadet Pinball. Remember that? That came with Windows 95? That was my jam. I loved that game. But yeah, the arcade system seller. Eh, arcade system seller. was Arcade Revolution. It was... You know, Taito is it? A, I don't think they're really around in such the same form anymore. We know Midway's out of business, or I guess they got bought up more or less, because you still see some Midway properties. So Mortal Kombat, really, as part of WB Interactive, for better or worse. Walked into that one. But this is. And last, and Space Invaders, you know, kind of falling off the radar. You still see, you still see Pac-Man every now and then. I think there was a popular mobile game a year or two ago. Didn't even make it past the first level. Oh, no, I'm still alive somehow, some way. Yeah, Pac-Man is still around in various forms. Now I'm dead. Pac-Man is around in s some various forms. I think they're, like I said, the mobile game recently was pretty popular. I think award nominated mobile game, though that doesn't seem to be exceptionally difficult. You just have to not strangle kids on screen and make you watch it in order to get a nomination for top mobile game and watch it, that Harry Potter game where you have to watch the kid get strangled. In order to uh, microtransaction or watch the kid get strangled, but not die, just tortured. Now will probably still somehow earn nominations and awards for mobile games. Ah, I missed that one. I thought I got that. But Space Invader seems to have fallen off the radar. You'd think that something as popular as Space Invaders was, and as we'll show next week, you can update it, keep the spirit of the original, and yet still harness the power of modern gaming at the same time, without diluting the spirit of the original game. That is going to be something we'll come back to next week as we celebrate the 40th anniversary of Space Invaders in North America. But this is just a, more of a history of Space Invaders than any demonstration of how to play Space Invaders. Unless you are one that subscribes to my... Oh, come on. I gotta hit this one. I gotta go out on hitting this fast... There we go. I gotta go out on hitting that one. Unless you subscribe to my clear out the columns rather than clear out the... Rather than clear out the rows, although doesn't always work. But yeah, that's it for Space Invaders. So I hope you had a good time and you learned a little bit about Space Invaders arcades and the disappearing hundred yen coins. There we go. Let's go. Close you out getting killed. So like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new. Share on social media, follow on social media, the social media handle is Unsilent on Air, and that is for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr. And don't forget, you can check out more classic games in the playlist. It's on the screen in the description down below, and more videos anytime on the channel page. And until the next time, I'm Unsilent. Thanks very much for joining me. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.